Okay, <coughs> Azif. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, so we will start the program now. Uh, okay, Dr. Nomi. All right, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Our honorable speaker, Mr. Muhammad Razif Samsudin, lecturer from School of Computing Science, College of Computing, Informatics and Media, UITM, UITM Malaysia. Professors, lecturers, video students, and all participants. Assalamualaikum and good evening to all. Before we begin, let's start with the recital of Umul Kitab al fatiha Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth session of the STEM webinar series organized by the School of Mathematical Science, College of Computing, Informatics and Media, UITM Malaysia, co-organized by the Agency of Presidential Ed Education Institutions, Uzbekistan and Malaysian Mathematical Science Society, well known as Persama. <coughs> My name is Uri Fatiha student of Bachelor Degree of Science Mathematics from UITM. I will be responsible for hosting today's webinar sessions. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, this webinar is broadcast live to Webex and our official YouTube channel, School of Mathematical Science, College of Computing, Informatics and Media, UITM Malaysia. All participants are very much welcome to ask any questions to the speaker to the web, uh, to the Webex chat panel, and also in the YouTube comment section, you may send in your questions at any time during the presentations. I will collect and address them during the Q and A sessions at the end of the talk. We, uh, we also will have a group photo sessions after the talk, so please be prepared for the sessions. And a gentle reminder to all participants: please make sure that your microphone is turned off during the webinar to ensure there are no audio interruptions and the event runs smoothly. However, you may turn on the microphone if you want to address questions to the speaker. Your kind cooperation is highly appreciated. Uh, appreciated. So ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce our honorable speaker for today, which is Mr. Muhammad Radif Hamsudi. He holds a master's degree majoring in intelligence system and fuzzy logic from University Technology Mara, UITM, with over 14 years of teaching experience. Mr. Razif is a researcher that has won many awards for his invention, both local and international. So without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Muhammad Razif Hamsuddin to deliver his thought and title, Artificial Intelligence as Disruptive Technology. All right, um, just a quick check. Can everybody hear my voice? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so let me share my screen first. Okay. All right, so I hope everybody can see my screen right now. Yes, can Okay, so. Okay, so uh, first of all, um, I would like to thank Nurin, all right, for this meeting is being uh, recorded for the opportunity, all right, for me to uh, be here today, and I would like to thank the School of Mathematical Science, College of Computing, Informatics, and Media UITM Shalam for inviting me to give a talk on. Uh, this topic, which is artificial intelligence as a disruptive technology. Okay. So, um, as uh, I was introduced earlier, okay, my name is Muhammad Razif Shamsuddin. Okay. So I am a senior lecturer here in uh, UITM, University of Technology Mara, Malaysia. And uh, my expertise or my research interest is uh, speci especially in artificial intelligence, computer vision, machine learning, fuzzy logic, 
evolutionary algorithm and big data analytics okay so these are some of uh, my information okay I, I i can be contacted by uh, uh, the email and uh, my uh, contacts are there okay and uh, at the bottom there is my social media account okay all right so without uh, further ado okay let's go on with the topic that we're gonna look into today okay which is uh, artificial intelligence as a disruptive technology okay so let's um uh, dwell into uh, what does disruptive technology means okay so disruptive technology refers to a new technological innovation anything that is new okay it can be an innovation it can be a product it can be a services that significantly alter the way businesses or entire industries operate ultimately uh, disrupting the market so the term was popularized uh, long ago in i think in the 90s okay and uh, uh, people used to describe a disruptive uh, technology that exists to replace the older version of the technology okay uh, if you look at the um, this uh, i would say uh, cartoon uh, snippet okay uh, which is very interesting okay and we all know long time ago um uh, music was uh, recorded on a vinyl right and then when a new technology uh, arrived such as the cassette tape okay so people listens to music uh, uh, using a walkman uh, if if you know <laughs> Uh, if you watch uh, the movie Guardian of the Galaxy, the main character, uh, uh, he he has a Walkman with him, right? So that was an old technology where people listen to music through a cassette tape. Okay, and then cassette tape is replaced again with a compact disc. Okay, with a CD, and then uh, the capacity of of the compact disc is uh advance has been through an advancement okay and change with a dvd and nowadays we can see uh the technology evolve into a blu-ray disc okay however even those technology is even replaced with a newer version a newer version such as uh a, a portable hard disk for example a thumb drive okay and this new technology uh, replaces the old one okay and nowadays with the very uh, uh, technological investment on on how uh, the internet works very fast right so people nowadays uh, don't even look into having a physical compact disc they put all their uh, songs or their uh, uh, music that they want listens to in the cloud Okay, instead of having it on uh, a physical device okay so that is an example of disruptive technology so um being uh, that uh, as i explained right um uh, i hope everybody can understand uh, what is actually a disruptive technology so um another example is netflix right I, I think everybody here, almost everybody have a Netflix account nowadays, right? So previously, probably you watch movies uh, by buying a DVD, buying a Blu-ray disc, for example, or you can watch through a satellite uh, channel, right? But nowadays, people opt for um, Netflix, so they, they can choose their own uh, movies that they want to uh enjoy okay so disruptive technology have the potential to completely change the way people live work and interact with each other okay uh, back in the old days when uh, i was uh, very little i like i i think all the boys like to to play computer games right 
So back in the old days, you you play alone, right? Yeah. You can you can only play. Uh, let's say you have an uh, some uh, friends that come over to your house, so you you can play with them. Okay, there's a two play game and all. But nowadays with the uh, technology, the internet technology, you can play with your friends through online. Okay, so you you can have your own uh, uh, console at your home, and your friends maybe probably have their own. Okay, so you interact with them through those uh, uh, platforms. So we call it platform. Okay. Um, another example is an, an easy example. Everybody have a mobile devices. Okay, so mobile devices also have dramatically altered the way how people communicate, how people access information. Okay, so uh, the rise of e-commerce have disrupted uh, traditional retail businesses. So, but in the old days, probably uh, if I want to buy something, I, I have to start my car, okay, go to the nearest uh, mall, for example. And buy things over there, but nowadays I can simply go to a website or a probably a e-commerce application just uh, to buy some of the things that I wanted to buy. So I don't have to go out. Okay, and uh, they do provide services like the delivery services and all, and it actually changed the way uh, we work. Okay, it it alters our life. Right. So one of the key characteristics of disruptive technology is that it often begins as a simpler or cheaper alternative to existing products and services. Okay, however, eventually it surpasses them in terms of performance, features, and and so much. Right. So I'll give you um some examples later that you can uh, look into. Okay, and we can even I would let everybody try. Uh, on your own you can you can have a hands-on experience on some of the technology that uh, is offered today okay so you can experience all those uh, as we go through uh, today uh, workshop all right okay so let's go on to the next slide uh, so this is some of the examples or the the 12 okay maybe there's more Okay, but these are the 12 disruptive technology that is uh, acknowledged and that is, um, is identified. Okay, so uh, probably back in the old days, you never knew that you can 3D print something. Okay, so let's say if I, um, in the near future, when 3D printing is available to everybody. Okay, so let's say um, if uh i'm interested in buying a very simple product that that would probably um uh, uh that can hang my uh, mobile phone for example i i need something that can i can mount my phone on my desk for example okay so probably uh, right now if i want to do that i have to buy it okay either i buy it online or i go to the uh, phone shop Okay, and I buy the phone mount. Okay, but in the near future, you can have a three D three D printer. You can print the product. Okay, you buy. You just buy the model. You print it on your own, and you can simply have it. Uh, as simple as that. Okay, but of course, uh, nowadays uh, to print something very small, you need uh a very long time to print. Okay, but in the near future. Uh, I think that's possible, right? So, if we were to go through each one of the disruptive technology here, it definitely will. I can go all day, all right? Talk about each of these uh, disruptive technologies. But um, today we want to focus on um, artificial intelligence. Okay. But before we move on, uh, uh, we want to truly understand okay, what is the important aspect of disruptive technology. Okay? 
So first of all, we need to understand that uh, disruptive technology often create new business opportunity. Okay, it's because um, well, what drives us all, right? It's money, right? Okay, so it creates new business opportunity and drive the economic growth. For example, the rise of e-commerce has created new jobs, areas like website design, online marketing, and logistics. Uh, while um, odd jobs, okay, while odd jobs like um, uh, retailers, okay, physical retailers, people that is uh, uh, the, the the front people that are uh, like cashiers and for example, right? So even if you go to the malls, you can do a self checkout, right? Okay, so this kind of job is replaced, right, by uh, uh, more uh, skilled jobs, right? And as I said earlier, okay, with all the business opportunity, with all the economic growth uh, that is driven by the disruptive technology, okay. Um, hold on. Uh, is somebody uh sharing something? Is it okay? Can can you still see my screen? No, no. Uh, no. No, no. Somebody, somebody shared the screen. All right. I think. Yes, I think so. Uh, the photo. Yes, the photo. Yes, the photo. The person is sharing the screen. Sure, sure. All right, how about now? Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So as I was saying, okay, um, Disruptive technology can also lead to job losses, okay, and the decline of established industry. Some industry can uh, be wiped out, okay. Uh, so we'll we'll discuss about this later, okay, as well as increase inequality and social unrest, okay. For example, the automation of certain job, okay, due the, to the technological advancement. Of disruptive technology because because some disruptive uh, technology is catered so that um, any uh, processes that is repeated okay like for example in uh, a, a factory for example a factory line produce a product so instead of having people uh, helping or doing the jobs it is uh, replaced by an automated technology. Like for example, uh, uh, like in the old days, uh, people are hired to do uh, uh, simple, simple jobs. Okay, in in uh, factories. Okay, to to create a product. Now it is replaced by uh, a machine. Okay. However, do we have to be scared of this? Okay. Okay, so we'll discuss this later, right? So it is also important for individual and organization to be aware of and adapt to the changes okay brought about by this disruptive technology. Okay. So this can involve continuously learning new skills, adopting new technology, as well as supporting policy that mitigate this negative impact of technological change. So uh, instead of us being afraid of this tech, uh, disruptive technology, okay, we have to take the opportunity to learn to how to embrace uh, the new technology. So we have to adapt, right? Whether we like it or not, okay, the technology is coming. Okay, we cannot we cannot stop the technology from uh, taking over. Uh, okay, um, in conclusion. Okay, disruptive technology has the power to change the world for better or for worse. Okay, so like uh, an easy example is at the palm of your hand, your your smartphone. Okay, um, so let's look at uh, what is artificial intelligence. 
so this is where things get more interesting okay so i do believe okay i do believe uh everybody here okay how many how many people i i have today uh, let me see okay by the way uh if you have any question or anything when i'm uh, presenting okay feel free to ask question okay you can ask question uh i'm not sure whether i can see can can somebody uh, type um, something mr Razi? yes uh there is a question uh at the webex chat uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. So, okay so um so pure maru asked um mm -hmm. What do you think about this algorithm used by uh, by high tech giants that always block the comments of those who do not follow the so called politically correct? Uh, what do you think about the high tech giants that want everyone to have a single thoughts on every uh, on every topic? Okay, it's a very interesting question. It's about um, automation on blocking. Uh, uh, your opinion right it's a public opinion right it 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 doesn't have to be political all right sometimes um even some keywords okay when you when you have a social media account okay so when you type in uh in uh, on your social media account you create a status or when you uh reply to a comment all right so your your uh, post submission may be flagged by the AI, right? Because uh, sometimes the tech giants they have some sort of uh, people that works on data analytics, and they what they do is they have a library, a sets of library that will flag your post, right? Okay. However, <laughs> however, there's always a workaround. Uh, there's always a workaround of things like this okay if you want to be vocal of course there's a risk to it okay so if you understand how ai works okay ai usually works on on looking at uh, the word and phrases that you use okay and sometimes okay uh, if you notice okay as, especially uh, uh, as uh, what I have experienced myself, okay, some words uh, that I consider normal, alright, but it is considered offensive in other languages, okay, but uh, I didn't mean uh, the word as an offensive offensive word, right? But the comment was flat, okay. So what 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 does this mean? Okay, this this means that the AI has uh, block my comment all right just by triggering the keywords that i type okay so what i can do is i can report back to the uh the uh, the provider the social media provider okay uh, i can see hands all right okay social media provider or if that doesn't work okay there's a workaround if you still want to be vocal you can either uh, use spaces okay you, instead you, you change the uh, letters for example e you change to number three okay you use uh, hyphens okay you use uh, punctuations that uh, when you when other people read the sentence okay they they can still relate to the message that you want to convey However, it won't be flagged by the AI. Okay, but but of course there will always be a risk, right? If people report your account, uh, you can uh, be banned forever from using the account. So you have to uh, buy buy a new uh, phone account number and start all over again. Okay. Any any other question? I I I saw I saw somebody raising their hand just now sure why uh, the chat is not appearing uh, in my screen here but uh, i will look into that later right so let's continue with what is artificial intelligence okay i do believe that uh, most of us okay most of us 
always consider AI to relate to robot as I shown you here lah. In my in my slide, that's why I put a robot here. Okay. Uh, when I ask people, okay, when I ask them, okay, what is AI? They will uh, say, oh, AI is robots. Okay. But AI is not just about robots. All right. It's considered uh, as of course because we are talking about disruptive technology so ai um, has uh, an ability to process a large amount of data identify patterns and make decisions uh, okay so it's different from from a pre-programmed software okay, usually we, um, i would say ai is a software right it's an application okay that can mimic how uh, people think okay so ai is already being used in many industries such as healthcare finance manufacturing uh, to improve efficiency to reduce costs and increase productivity okay it also helps people to do their job better right some job can be automated it is uh, physically uh, replaced by an ai Okay, uh, but uh, some other uh, application uh, helps people to do better at their jobs. Okay, so again, I will discuss this uh, later with everybody, right? And one of the main reason uh, AI is considered as disruptive, okay, because it has the potential to completely change the way uh, work is organized and performed. For example, okay, AI algorithm can be trained to perform tasks okay, such as okay, image recognition. I'll show you one example of image rec recognition after this. Okay. Um, and then it can uh, process natural language, okay, speech recognition. It can do predictive analytics. Okay. It can predict stock market prices. It can predict the weather. Okay. Uh, uh, it can uh, do so much it has so much potential okay to but it also have potential to displace many jobs okay particularly in industry that rely heavily on manual labor or routine tasks like i said earlier okay any repetitive task or any routine task or manual labor okay can be replaced with ai of course uh, uh it will have a very uh large overhead cost okay to to produce the the automated automated uh robots for example okay and to uh, produce the software and all but uh, the only the overhead cost is uh big okay so big industry can opt for this okay but small small industry will still still rely on manual labor that's why we don't have to worry lah okay so most uh, disruptive technology uh, affect the masses at big companies okay so this is just uh, some example that i want to explain lah so artificial intelligence is so big okay it 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 can be so many things uh, and and um if if you notice okay ai has been there okay it has been uh with us okay since so long but we didn't realize lah okay so this is an example of uh uh what dwells inside an ai so most ai nowadays that are in the market must have something to do with machine learning Okay, so machine learning and deep learning are a related term and it is a specific area of artificial intelligence and uh, it is one of the four basic uh, machine learning paradigm. Okay, uh, so it, it, it is, uh, for example, we have the supervised learning, the unsupervised learning and reinforced learning or a mix of all those that uh, I've mentioned earlier. Okay, but what I can see 
nowadays, okay, the with the technology that we have, like facial recognition, everybody have a phone. Okay, you can you can uh, uh unlock your phone using facial recognition, for example. So that's one example of uh disruptive technology. Okay, usually you don't have to uh key in a password anymore. Okay, just uh point your camera at your face and it will automatically unlock your phone. Okay, so from the facial recognition software, the most of that are actually uh, supervised learning. So what is supervised learning? Supervised learning is um, a learning mechanism of an AI that needs data. Okay, and in fact, um, almost every AI uh, models, AI architectures, AI algorithms, all right? So they they use a lot of data. Okay, they use a lot of data. And um, by looking into the, the, the data and learning, um, it is mostly considered as supervised learning, okay? okay if, if you later, um, if you uh, study on your own, all right? So if you like to study on uh, AI and machine learning, okay, you would know that uh, data with labels, right? Data with labels. So what is data with labels? I'll explain it later. Uh, data with labels can be used to train a machine learning. Uh, so after we train, what we can do? There's so many things. There's so many things that we can do uh, with machine learning and artificial intelligence. Okay, so like I said earlier, what is supervised learning? What is uh, machine learning? Okay, so for example, if we have a label data, uh, an easy example of a label data would be uh, an images, images of, uh, let's say, uh, male and female. All right, so I want to create a machine learning, artificial intelligence that can recognize whether a person is a male or a female. Okay, but before I can go on about creating the artificial intelligence that is able to do that particular task that I said earlier, I need data. So data can be an images okay, of uh, female and male. So I need a lot of data. Of data okay, so uh, let's say uh, if I have a variation of data of uh, female faces, okay? Variation data of male faces. Okay, so and then with these uh, images, I can label them, okay? So with this kind of features, it may be a male. And another feature can be determined to, uh, to how do I say it? Uh, Usually we guess, right? So we guess whether a person is a male or a female by looking at some features. Okay, some features. For example, if you have a very long hair, there's a high chance that that person is a female, right? If I have a facial hair, high chance that that particular person is a male, for example. Okay, so these features okay, can be in a form of images data that can be labeled as simply male and female. So what the uh, AI do is it tries to associate, okay, so people that have uh, a facial hair usually is a male. Uh, people that has a very long hair is female or probably they look at lips, okay, lips of a male and lips of a female probably uh, be a bit different, the shape of the face and all. There are so many features that uh, can be used to differentiate between those two genders. Okay. However, okay, however, this uh, disruptive technology of AI, okay, uh, can also make mistake. Okay, looking into the same example, right, we as a human, Okay, sometimes we do make mistakes uh, by looking at people. Okay, we we try to identify 
some people we, we when we look at their faces okay we we tend to uh, classify okay we tend to put them in groups okay oh, oh this kind of people uh, is probably a male uh, these people are probably female but some some males do look like a female right some females have a features of a male for example and of course uh, the of the the possibility of that occurring is quite low okay, there's a chance that we may uh, make a mistake okay so uh, machine learning do this kind of mistake okay uh, so it, it it does uh sometimes uh, uh learn from the data that was presented to it okay so if the, there's an anomaly meaning that say there's a male with a female feature Okay, the the skin is soft okay uh, tight lip for example okay long hair but that particular person is still a male okay however the ai or the machine learning may misclassify uh, misclassify or make an error by uh, misclassifying that particular person gender right so with that being said okay so there's a lot of uh, application of AI as a disruptive technology. Okay, back in the old days, uh, we never knew that uh, it is possible for a self-driving car. All right, so I uh, I do think everybody here is aware that there is already uh, a self-driving car. Right, uh, it's, it's produced by Tesla. Can I see hand? Do everybody know? There's a self-driving car produced by Tesla. You don't have to steer. So what you do is you uh, set the location that you're going to. And um, the car will calculate the traffic. It will calculate whether it has enough uh, power to reach the destination. And it drives on its own. So you don't have to steer you now. Okay, so AI takes full control over the operating car. Okay, so I'll I'll show you some videos after this. <laughs> okay, so um I don't want to be monotonous. Okay, with my presentation and all, so I would probably it's been like forty minutes. Uh, I'm explaining for like forty minutes. So I'd like to show you some examples. Uh, probably some videos. Uh, just after this, all right? Okay, and uh, everybody is is aware of Siri, for example, and Alexa. Okay, do you know Alexa? Okay. So it's a device where you can speak to it, and then it can respond to um, your instructions. You can tell Alexa to play a song, for example. You can tell Alexa to do a search. Okay, so if you are you are cooking, um, in your kitchen, okay, you tell Alexa, Alexa, can you find me a recipe for a chicken curry, for example? So, so Alexa understand, uh, your how you speak, okay, and it will assist you on searching the um the recipe that you ask for, and uh she will be able to explain as you cook okay um recognizing patterns in the set so like i've given you earlier on the examples of uh, ai uh, recognizing males and females right it can be more than that okay that is just one example okay it can be uh recognizing defects okay so you have a, a factory line where you produce a product and you want AI to identify whether a product has a defect or not. So whatever product has a defect, it can be omitted out from the production line, for example. Okay. Uh, and of course, lastly is robotics and internet of things. There's so many examples of uh, AI examples that I can show you. Okay. Uh, and uh, the potential uh, endless all right so let me uh, stop here for a while okay, before i go on because i want to show you 
um, some videos okay so hold on so this is a very interesting video okay let me open this so this is uh, a video of a dad that teaches uh, his kids uh, while using AI okay uh, okay um, I will play this okay if there's a problem you can't hear it or you can you can't see the video please do tell me about it right okay so let me play the video first Mr. Aziz, is it possible to uh, increase the volume? Okay, let me kiss. Sorry, but we cannot turn on the TV until the boys' room is clean. Said we can't turn on the TV until the boys' room is clean. So now we're going to demonstrate Jarvis's artificial intelligence on photos. So I'm going to take a photo of Kalani, Mason, and Blake. Look at me. One, two, three. All right. So Jarvis is going to take this photo and process it. New photo uploaded of Blake, Tia, and Kalani, a man and a woman playing a video game. So here we can see Jarvis has already put the photo on our family blog. Zoom in on the tags. So on the tags, Jarvis identified Blake, Tia, and Kalani. And then scroll to the top and we can see the caption you gave it. It was a man and a woman playing a video game. Right, so that's one video. Okay, so I'll play another video just to show you. I think okay. Is everybody aware of uh, Amazon Go, where you can go to the shop and then you take it, take whatever you want, and then you simply get out from the store. Have you seen that video before? Can uh, I see him? Yes, I have. Okay, some people have already seen that. Okay, so I'll play. I'll play another one. Yeah. Never mind. If we have more time, I'll show you that one. But I think I'll show you uh, one. Um, this one. I think this is uh, a. It's like a um, idea. Okay. But um, I it's already been implemented. If this is an old video. I think um, nowadays they have already implemented this. So the driver is not driving the truck. You can see that. Okay. So um, this is one example of disruptive technology on AI. Okay. So what are the jobs that is replaced? Truck driver. All right.
Right, I can you can as you can see. Um, so the the driver does not have to give his full attention to driving, and the AI sort of assists uh, the driving uh, instead of the driver having to drive the truck on on his own. Right. So what do we learn? Uh, with this example, right? So probably, uh, we as a human, okay, we tend to, um, uh, have a work fatigue. Okay, we tend to, uh, be sleepy if we work for long hour. Okay, we need rest. Okay, so AI can help. Okay, AI can help, uh, the truck drivers. Okay, to. Uh, not necessarily focus uh, all the time uh, driving the truck. So I think this was developed by Mercedes. Okay. So the AI monitors the speed it controls the speed of the truck. Uh, it, it is adhering to the uh, traffic. Okay. I think this is enough. So let me just show you another one. Um, this one, I think. Detecting cancer in real time okay no no, no. Uh, i will go for this one peace recognition okay. so by you in china is like google right. Let me show you something else. I'm actually here with the team, the director. I'm going to use it to try to see who is in my picture instead of the live view. Yeah, I'm going to use Andrew's card and try to sneak it in to see what happens. So the system is not organizing. So it's uh, it kind of refuse to recognize. Okay, now I'm gonna use my own face. Okay. So face recognition technology like this is taking on very rapid and I hope that's a step technology is I'm gonna show you a face. All right, so that uh some of the uh, videos and examples that I can share. All right, so let's continue. Let me swap this. All right. Okay, so uh, like I've shown you earlier, um, uh, facial recognition have been implemented uh, so widely. All right, so if you have a Facebook social media account, um, if you don't realize, they actually have a uh, deep face uh, face recognition, right? So let's say, for example, um, if you uploaded uh, an image of yourself on your social media account and probably somebody else, when you go to an event or you go to... Um, uh, your friends' meetings, okay? Um, they would upload uh, a group photo, and uh, in, you are included in that uh, group photo, okay? So what Facebook did is it easily uh, recognizes your face from the group photo that was uploaded by your friend, and automatically tries to tag you instead. So this is what Facebook did. 
Okay, and, and I think they went through uh, legal uh, issues, right, about this because uh, sometimes if you don't have uh, a social media account on Facebook, what they did is they create some sort of shadow account. Okay, so you have a shadow account where where your photos it is uploaded by somebody else if you're in a group photo and all. So what they did is they uh, accumulate this uh, similar faces okay and creates a shadow profile of you and um, Facebook can also recognize your face with a real person if any of of the person that uploaded the image tries to uh, lay that was uploaded all right so if they label the your face with a name so your face will be associated with that name all right so let's try something um you can try it on your own all right so if you have a discord okay if you have a discord account uh you can subscribe to this uh, service the uh, mid journey okay it's called mid journey and what mid journey did was it lets you uh create okay it lets you create um images uh, or illustrations right and depending on what uh you want to type in okay so let me give you uh, another uh, realistic example all right so hold on so not this one okay this one okay, it's, a, it's an application the name is of this application is Dream by Wombo. Okay, you can have this installed in your uh, smartphones. Okay, you can uh, download the Dream by Wombo application okay, on your smartphone, or you can go to the website. Okay, so let me open the website. Okay, let me see. This is this is the website. Uh, like this one. Okay, and then you can type type in a prompt. I'll show you an example. Okay, so let's say if I want to create a character, okay, a man, a man with an elephant head. Okay, for example, okay, a man with an elephant head. Okay, and then I want to choose an art style. Okay, there's there's a premium one so i have to you have to subscribe if you want the premium one but let's say i just go with um vfx for example All right so i click create okay if you have a reference image you can upload your own reference image so it will create the illustration based on the image you uploaded okay and if you notice the image earlier of my self portrait just now that when i was in introducing myself that particular image is created by an ai okay so now it's creating so it would take some time to create the image oh it's an error it's an error so no problem so i think because i've opened this since uh this evening so let me create another one a man with an elephant head so i'll just go to real stick for example just create one let me see whether you can create for me or not uh, so it's creating uh, but this is just an elephant okay so i can make variation okay sorry if I want to create variation, I have to pay. Previously, don't have, but I can simply uh do it again. You know, no problem. Like another one. Previously, is is so easy. I can refresh this. Okay, so never mind. But I'll just try it again. A uh, man. Okay, and uh. I'll choose VFX. 
Um, just a man and elephant. Alright, so um, if you try this again and again, eventually it will um do uh, something with the prompt that you get in. Alright, so if let's say I want to go to meet Jenny. Right, so mid journey is the one that I've shown you earlier. Okay, this one. So this is mid journey, so it's free. However, uh, if you use mid journey on Discord, right, you see there's so many people uh, creating images from mid journey. So uh, the problem is that people can see your work, right? So when you, when you have to key in the prompt here, so the prompt I think is. Uh, See, so this is a prompt. Uh, imagine. So I have to type in imagine. Okay, and then, uh, uh, man with an elephant. Okay, okay, and as you can see here, there are so many. Uh, preferences that you can fill in uh, you can create a background that you want okay you can create um a, to a reference of which artist you know okay and the ambience okay of the photo that you want to create okay but i'm just going to be very simple with this yep sorry I think I cannot do this because well, I have to accept the terms and condition. Okay, accepted. Okay, previously it doesn't have that. Um, of course, when uh, the technology is uh, introduced, there will be new policies and all. And is and. Um, yeah. right. Okay, so I have sent uh, to meet Jenny. So the bot will receive my uh, instruction, right? Because there's so many other requests, so it, it, it will take some time. Uh, because of, of course, the one that I'm using here is free again it's mid journey on discord but you have to do it on a pc okay so if you have a, a discord on your mobile phone um i'm i'm sure that it won't work okay? uh, so again <laughs> see and this is just a man with an elephant an elephant head right uh, so you can you can choose let's say if you uh like uh this one right so you can uh, either uh, create a variation of this image this is one two three four okay so v2 means um, a variation of number two and u2 means an upscale version of uh, image number two meaning that if i like this version i want a larger or a bigger version of this image I can choose to upscale the uh, second image, which is U2. Okay. And then uh, if I want a variation of uh, this uh, this second image, I just have to click at V2. Okay. So if you notice, there are so many other people that are uh, creating um, so many artworks, so many illustration and all. All right. Um, uh, and and um, uh, it is it gets very interesting, right? So you can try it on your own. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the slide. Hold on. Let me see this one. All right. So I have another one. All right. So let's let's look at um the machine app learning application or the AI application that you have been using 
Alright, so let's uh, the disruptive technology that you have been using. So back in the old days, um, when you travel, right? So you have to look at a physical map, okay? And it is very uh, exhausting. It can be exhausting. It can be uh, tasteful, right? And and confusing. Okay? So you have to uh, look at the map manually okay and uh, i think it can also be uh, frustrating if you uh, didn't really know how to look at the map okay let me see okay. you can open it is it there no 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 it isn't showing okay never mind um uh, but you understand that um uh, nowadays we have uh, uh google maps we have ways okay and for uh, uh traveling using uh, maps on our mobile devices okay and people like i said earlier you have netflix right so these are all disruptive technology that um changes our life all right okay so this is another um example okay i have with me uh, this one, um, an example of uh, an application. Okay, let me show you early on. Here we are. Okay, this is Discord. Okay, and then, okay, have any of you heard of Chat Chat GPT? It's been um, the talk nowadays. Everybody is using Chat GPT. <laughs> ChatGPT is where you go to the OpenAI website, okay, and you can ask ChatGPT to create a, a, a type setting, okay, or or is a, a, an essay, I would say, an essay. If you can, you need to uh, ChatGPT to explain you about AI, what is AI, and so forth, right? So you can create one, okay. And then, okay, I have with me this website, naturalreaders.com. So what this website do is, okay, let me play this. Artificial intelligence. Can everybody hear? It's a field of computer science that aims to create intelligent yeah. machines that can perform tasks that normally require human intelligence, such as recognizing speech, making decisions, okay. and solving problems. So this is one example of creating a content right so um, back in the old days okay if i were to make a video content a tutorial uh, uh, a youtube tutorial for example right i have to um do almost everything uh, on my own okay I have, I have to write down the things that i want to say okay uh, and then uh, if I were to do captioning, okay, I have to write the captions, okay, and I have to uh, capture the video on my own, all right, I have to record my voice and all. But nowadays you have things like this, okay, that shortens that process, okay. So where you have the text, okay, so you just probably uh, find out what is the issues that you want to um, that you want to discuss in your channel for example okay, you and you ask chat gpt to explain uh, a three minute explanation on the current issue for example um, let's say uh, on the uh, malaysian economic uh, growth for example or a more interesting topic on um what are the current fashion uh what are the current current fashion trends in malaysia for example so you can simply ask chat gpt to do a three minute um write-up okay and then you paste it to this uh natural reader choose the voice i think i can choose the voice here see i can choose to a guy if i wanted to okay and then automatic uh, okay i have to pay but i do think that um it is a very small price for you to pay in order for you to create your own unique content uh, but of course you have to pay lah. 
okay. So, uh, naturalreader.com is not the only uh, text-to-speech uh, application that offers um, uh, this kind of services. Okay, so there are other uh, websites. Okay, so that it is very competitive. So, you can choose the cheapest one. Okay, if you want to start up. Okay, and uh, it will produce uh, a, a very um, good uh, explanation in terms of of the the voice presentation, right? How how the uh, text is is pronounced, okay? The, how how it is conveyed, so it is very professionally edited for you. Okay, so just take the audio, okay, and then. Uh, probably stitch it to a relevant video. It it shouldn't be you talking. It can be a avatar. Okay, it can be an avatar. It can be a, a video about the things that you're talking, uh, the topic that you're talking. All right. So it makes things simpler. Right. So that's the reason why um, AI is considered as such. Uh, disruptive technology uh, okay have you tried uh, this one on your own you can immediately later go to this website dream.ai slash uh, create uh, dream by Wombo. okay or um, you can go to uh, your discord account if you have one if you don't have a discord account you can create one and you can subscribe to the mid journey uh, channel if i'm not mistaken mid journey okay so you can try out uh, creating your own um, illustration uh, okay it probably be your first masterpiece okay all right so let's um go on with the topic all right okay so with um ai being a disruptive technology okay so people are worried people are worried that uh, ai will take over their job okay of course uh, if i were an artist i would also be worried <laughs> okay because everybody can can create uh, meaningful uh, such a beautiful illustration with just uh, typing uh, a specific uh, caption uh, or i can convey my idea okay even though i don't have um an uh, illustration skill okay i don't know how to draw i don't have and don't know how to cut color and all so i can go into the same market as what the current artists are doing all right so um most artists that i came up with they are doing a protest okay they they, they they want you all to boycott ai that generates um this um ai art what we call it ai art right because what they say is ai art um steals uh, steals art from other people and create as their own the way i see it okay ai is simply like um, a person learning how to create art. Of course, if um, if any of the participants tonight, okay, um, uh, this evening, okay, if any of this particip uh, the participant that are currently in this uh, webinar, okay, if you like to draw, okay, if you you are in the artist group, okay, um, you should uh, uh, be aware of. Uh, these uh, things lah okay but should we ban ai because of this uh, i think not okay because we can consider as ai learning how to draw okay ai in order for ai to uh, draw they need a reference like if you want to learn to draw okay you will up a reference of the artist that you admire okay so similar to ai ai uh, take up a reference of an artist okay and it will create 
something similar okay something similar but unique to the idea that um that it is uh, supposed to do okay let's say if i do the same caption again okay a man with a, an elephant head for example so it will try to understand my, uh, the context of what i'm trying to say and then at the same time creates uh, the art that it was supposed to create okay so it's like a hit and miss lah so ai can also create a masterpiece or probably um, art that won't be appreciated okay all right so let's let's um go on to the next slide so these are misconceptions all right uh, so artificial intelligence would uh, probably not take your jobs away all right especially if you are an expert in the area if you are an a good artist okay if you are good at drawing you uh, do great illustrations all right so you you can create uh, masterpiece artwork okay so what are you afraid of okay so there's also other instances okay other instances of um uh, people that make use of the technology so i'll, I'll share with you all uh, later after this but these are some of the examples right some, some of the examples of um uh, uh, works right so work whether this works will be replaced by ai uh, okay so let's look at lawyers lawyers automation risk is only five percent so uh, as of today lawyer can be uh, rest assured that ai wouldn't take their job away <laughs> okay because the automation this is only five percent okay marketing managers automation risk is four percent physician pathology is right automation risk is the website the website name is will robot take my job dot com right so so this is the website okay you just enter your job so i'll just go and take this one uh, preschool elementary middle sec middle secondary and special education teachers in general teachers lah okay so whether ai will take over the job of a teacher this is an ad so i'll just close the ad oh sorry i think i've accidentally clicked uh, at an advocacy preschool teacher automation risk is only nine percent so this is the uh it's a very low uh, automation risk so ai would not probably take uh teacher's job <laughs> in the near future right post-secondary teacher like me okay uh, this one uh, with automation is a bit higher 13 percent but still i wouldn't say that um it is a risk all right uh, so it's still considered low all right however okay if you look at um uh, like this one financial club right? financial club is um automation risk see 100 percent okay uh, and a very small growth meaning that um people are currently being replaced uh, okay so people being replaced and uh, there's less and less job of financial club uh, right so you can have a look at this so that you know okay so in the next few years um whether the the job that that is offered okay is fully automated or not so you won't dwell into uh getting over there all right okay so let's get back to the slides any questions so far no question is it all right so with that being said all right 
AI, of course, has a lot of benefits. Okay, so let's look at the benefits. Um, okay, um, first is access. All right, so um, some jobs, okay, some jobs that are very uh, dangerous, okay, um, have a very little access to people, right? So AI robot can be can replace human right so instead of having people going over uh, places that is not safe for humans for example laboratories to mines deep ocean caves or probably um, in some countries they do have uh, radioactive sites uh, see so um, so instead of having people going over there you can send drones or robots to uh, perform tasks over there okay and then accuracy and precision okay it's difficult uh, decision okay uh, I'll, i have an yeah. example um, where um, uh, doctors uh, can be assisted by ai and, and in, in some cases even though they try to compare um uh what uh, doctors or physicians uh identify uh, cancer patients right so they have a very same uh, result by identifying cancer uh patients and diseases and in some cases where pre diagnosis of a cancer is identified by earlier on by a robot but not by doctors right so it can be more accurate okay recurring manual tasks okay as uh, things that that is easily automated okay repetitive jobs can be take uh, over by ai so low level repetitive tasks definitely will be replaced by an ai right so it's um, for convenience sake uh, easy to do things like the one that i've shown you earlier um, if you don't have any knowledge on creating an illustration on your own but you have a very good idea so you can actually uh, use ai uh, okay to create your own illustration probably you want to create a book okay, you have uh, a science fiction book when you want to write on your own later okay but um you don't have the money to hire and uh, people to do the illustration so you can do the illustration on your own by using an ai ai application okay so it's convenient easy easy to do uh, limited effort with high <laughs> um and don't worry okay so we, although some jobs will be taken over by the disruptive te ai technology um, some existing job will be more productive. Uh, okay, people can do their job faster, more accurate. Okay, and this was validated by the uh, Microsoft CEO. Okay. Okay, this is a real case study. Okay, it's a friend of mine. Okay, so uh, he actually created this uh, first image. So his own illustration. He's an artist. Okay he created this earlier illustration okay so it's an old work of his so uh, sending this same image okay the same image that he drew on his own okay he drew on his own the image and he uploaded to uh, the ai app okay and told the ai app to create a variation of the same illustration Okay, so this will work very well if you have a client. Okay, if you have a client that wanted you to um, create an illustration, for example, okay, of a product. Okay, but they, of course, you won't want to um, present only one type of design. Okay, you want to make a variation of design. So it makes your job easier by applying this is your own work okay instead of you 
um, refusing to use AI, okay, you can actually make use of how AI technology can offer you to do your job more efficiently. Uh, this is one example, lah. Okay, one example where uh, an original image is used to create a variation, uh, a variation of different images. You are the artist, you control how the artwork is generated. Okay, so this is another example by the same artist. So, uh, three variation of three different illustration is created um, as a different version as a different version by just simply using AI okay so same image um, increase productivity uh, so he this person make use of AI to increase his productivity instead of declining to use the technology he actually make use of it Okay, so this is um, today's news. Okay, today's news um, at uh, in my country in Malaysia. Okay, uh, the current uh, ratio is um, I think in two thousand twenty one is one to four hundred twenty, meaning one doctor will have to tend with four hundred and twenty patient, uh, which is quite a lot. Okay, we we have uh i think we don't we need more doctors okay so we need more doctors by the end of this year as uh there are more doctors that uh, is resigning okay they want to resign and all so it will reach to one to one thousand by the end of the year okay uh, okay and then there's this youtube video okay where uh, this YouTube video explains uh, that AI is proven to perform as good as an expert in diagnosing diseases such as cancer. And in some cases, uh, AI actually can predict a pre-diagnosis, meaning that um, this patient has a possibility to, um, to be infected with cancer, cancerous uh, diseases. So it can some sort of advise a pre preventive action rather than um, cure okay which is very interesting okay so what we do in um, in uh, uitm in the college okay kppim so these are some of my student works okay so on my student work we make use of the ai technology okay um, we have uh, experts coming in uh, that wanted our help okay um, so this is one of my student works um, the name of the software is sclera which is a upper body assessment okay so what is a upper body assessment okay usually when you work okay in a workplace environment you tend to do repetitive job right you if you work in a kitchen you chop things okay you uh, probably if you are a general worker, you tend to do uh, uh, physical jobs, a job that, that has something to do with your uh, uh, physical movement. Okay, so what we do is, okay, we, we create this some sort of skeletal analysis of an upper body to identify uh, the posture of a human okay so if let's say when you do some some work repetitively and that particular job is done over the year it would probably have a health risk okay so normally this will be identified by an ex expert so the expert have to go to the workplace and they have to assess the patient okay and then they have to give the assessment manually okay but we reduce that we manage to reduce that by just simply having an ai to analyze uh, the patient instead of having an expert over there uh, so it actually does not really replace the expert because 
and in the end uh, you need an expert to validate okay, you need the expert to validate whether um, the assessment is right or wrong even though um, the accuracy is quite high okay but in the end uh, when it comes to um, uh, healthcare okay so you need somebody to validate um, the automated task but the job um, is a lot easier okay because uh, uh, previously the expert have to go to the site they have to measure the uh, patient okay the, the the posture of the patient which involve a lot of tasks right okay so this is another application that we have which is hand gesture recognition for the impact i'll show you some of the application after this um, so you can see it running uh, in real time okay uh, so hand gesture for example if uh, um, like a uh, mute person okay they, they use sign language right okay and not everybody is uh, aware or have the knowledge on uh, how uh, what or what uh, each hand gesture means all right so so we have created something that that uh, AI can recognize okay AI can recognize the hand gesture so the uh, impact can communicate with uh, anybody that they want so this is another work so most of uh, the the work uh, that that is um, uh, in under my supervision usually would have something to do with computer vision right um, because it's um, um, one of the area of expertise uh, that i have okay that, so i can advise my students so this is uh, face mask detection okay so the program can identify whether you are wearing a face mask properly or not uh, so it, it knows whether you are wearing a face mask or you're not wearing a face mask so um or you probably wear the face mask but um incorrect okay so try drowsy eye detection okay uh, so it 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 can uh, so the, for this example um it can be implemented in cars right so if you don't have a self-driving car at least you can check up on yourself whether you're feeling sleepy or not so the the program or the application can quickly identify whether a person uh, is sleepy and when driving or not okay so these are uh, some of the application right of course with all the benefits um, and um, the things that i've shown all the potential and all ai still have its own drawbacks okay so first is uh, lack of transparency so imagine if uh, ai makes decision uh, like the one that asked earlier right when you do uh, some comments on the social media uh, you are you are trying to be politically correct but right? you you are criticizing um a political party for example right so you are banned from commenting for example all right so ai uh, doesn't allow you um, to read uh, it's, it's like it's you are being shut down okay uh, so these are uh, the, the the decisions and the policy that uh, needs to be addressed all right so um when uh, ai is introduced uh, in our society okay but of course if you know how AI works, there's always a work around. Okay, there's always you can you can instead you, instead of posting uh, text, you can post the text as image. Okay, you create a text. Okay, but the text is not a real text; it's an image, and then you upload it. Um, it actually allows you to to do that without being automatically banned. But again, but again. Uh, there's a chance that um, you're being reported and and your account get uh, permanently banned, uh, right? So you have to be very careful on that. Um, ethics, it biases people train the AI machine. The system will pollute with 
discriminated data. Okay, I have an experience with this because I have a hobby. Okay, I have uh, mini miniature toys and all. Okay, um, one of sometimes I do sell some of my collection, and I've sold one toy that have a uh, a gun. Okay, it's a very small toy, and and that particular toy have a, a laser blaster. So what? Uh, and I uploaded it in Facebook. So what the AI recognize is that the AI recognize me selling uh firearms. Okay, so it it flagged my account. Okay, and I was surprised that uh, that the AI identify the toy as uh, a firearm. So it can also make mistakes. Okay, and then liability it has become harder pointing at the responsible party of failing self learning AI machine in 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 the end um uh, if we were to uh, rely 100% on AI especially uh, in uh, issues that involve lives and all um definitely uh, there's nobody to be blamed uh, nobody is responsible uh, responsible to the decision that was being made okay so not everything must be automated and um, people need to realize this. Uh, so I'm afraid that one day, okay, one day because we are very complacent on how AI is being implemented in our daily life. So we didn't realize that uh, at one point people will implement uh, AI to do a decision that uh, can be a liability to us. Uh, okay. Uh, and then privacy issues, trade off between privacy uh, guarantees uh, more data. Right? So so data can involve some privacy issues. So for example, if let's say AI tries to recognize your face and all, so it actually uh, invades your privacy. Okay. Okay. This is an one example. Uh, although the video that I've shown to you, the Baidu video. Um, it's AI still can be full, right? So you can, you can have a fine makeup artist to, um, uh, you can impose as uh, other people, right? So the the facial recognition technology can still be full, uh, with this kind of hacking. Okay, we call this hacking, lah. Okay. Alright, so I have this one. I have this this uh, program with me. I can show you later, right? Okay, um, and you can try this uh, other versions of AI. So this is a quick draw where where when we we when we can draw a doodle, you can draw a doodle. So I trick this uh, AI. It, it asked me to draw a bush. So I I drew a bush with a face. Okay, but if I were to ask you what is this, you won't be able to quickly recognize that what I'm drawing is actually a bush, right? But the AI get confused because the shape of the face that I'm drawing is simply uh, look like a bush, uh, right? So it also identifies uh, some closest drawing, other drawing that may be similar to mine. So again, yeah, I can make mistake. It can be tricked. All right. So before I conclude, I want to uh, show you some few working examples. So I have with me this one. Uh, so this is uh, one example of hand gesture uh, detection. Okay. So hold on. Uh, or I have to close my sorry it, it has an error because i did not i need to stop my i need to stop my my video first hold on okay i'm sharing the screen uh, stop video okay start my video okay i need to rerun this Okay, uh, so 
this is my video okay i'm running the video on top of the ai uh, model ai algorithm that recognizes my hand okay hold on see so as you can see i have these 42 points okay 42 points on my hand and this particular gesture is identified as stop see stop okay this is a fist and if my hand is not shown in the camera it it will stop analyzing okay it will only analyze if my hand is present in the video feed okay so if i thumbs up okay see thumbs up over there okay, it shows the meaning of of the gesture that i'm doing again thumbs up see the numbers at the background so all that are actually the data that is fed to the AI. Okay. Thumbs down. Call me. Peace. Rock. <laughs> okay. These are um, uh, pre-learned gesture that is fed to the AI. So the AI understand, oh, okay. If I see this kind of gesture, they know that it's a thumbs up. And then I change it becomes call me see thumbs up call me see uh, so apart from just uh, this simple example uh, it can be extended to something that is uh, has many possibilities uh, one of the cases that my student did was uh, to do the sign language okay, sign language okay to help uh, people communicate better all right and um, imagine if the points okay is being used to control a robot hand okay i can actually control a robot hand by uh, creating movement okay in by just using my camera uh, so i don't have to have some other uh add-ons devices to identify the gesture of my hand simply by uh, having a webcam i can uh, probably control uh, some uh, robot hands at the end of uh, another part of the world right and it's possible okay it's possible okay so this is one example so let me stop this so one another example be uh, this one. Okay. Okay. Right. So as you can see, it recognizes me as a person. Okay. Let me see if I have other things to show. Mm, okay. Um, so yes. It's a bottle. So the AI is able to identify this as a bottle. How about remote? Right. It identify I see it there's a remote. So there's a small um thin line of the AI able to recognize a cell phone and a remote see it uh, it struggles to um, understand and tries to uh, identify the object that i'm holding in the video whether it is a remote or it is a cell phone okay so probably the ai needs more data as to uh, help me identify um, the environment by looking through the webcam that i have all right so this can be used as a surveillance all right so it can be further more implemented to something meaningful uh, or something better all right um i can give you another example okay so let me see whether i can Okay. 
Have you heard of Flappy Bird? The game, the Flappy Bird game. game? Have you ever heard of Flappy Bird before? No, Mr. Aziz, I haven't heard about it. Okay, it's a, an old mobile game. It's very hard to play. It has been viral before because not many people can can um, go through all the level. It's, it's just a simple game, but it's very hard to play. So, um, and it, it's not available anymore because the creator took down the game. But later, many other people create a similar game. Lah. So, what I have with me is an AI that actually plays the game. Uh, the game play people. Hold on. A bit slow. Let's wait for it to load up. Yeah, I don't know why. Don't. Sometimes, uh, okay, sometimes it's a bit slow. So I have to rerun again. Okay, I think. Oh, I, I don't have PyGim installed here. Um, okay, let me see if I have it in another environment. Empty. Okay. Mm. I have so many uh, environments. Sometimes I don't remember whether I have the correct one or not. Okay. This one can't be used anymore. Okay. See, see. 37 is already used. Or probably I've deleted the the correct environment. Okay, let me see whether I can run this. No, no, it doesn't have. I don't have the pie key with me. Let me keep it. See. Okay, I see. Just yes. a reminder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are now at 9.50, about okay. 9.50 p.m. And okay. we have a few questions for you. Okay, so I, I think I'll just uh, read it up. Okay. Um, um, Sorry for that. Okay, never mind. Uh, I understand. Okay. Uh, so I, probably before I wrap up, I can answer the question first. Okay. Uh, Nurin, you can oh, okay. um, read the question. Thank you, Mr. Razi, for an interesting and your valuable insights. Now we will answer some questions that were asked in our WebEx chat. So, um, Okay, so for the first question is that um, what do you think about chat GPT and other chatbots type like the upcoming BART from Google and another from China? How do you think about its impact on our education system, especially on student assessment? Because this capacity of this chatbot in sur uh, surpass academic question, if not 100% accurate, it is highly acceptable. What we need to do in, pre in preparing the cost assessment, example, test, assignment, and et cetera. All right. So it's a very good question. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, it's a very good question because um, chat, chat GPT takes, takes us over by the storm. Okay, it just simply comes like that. Everybody is using it. Um, and we cannot stop students from using chat GPT. Okay, but... I notice, okay, I notice when, um, because chat GPT usually uh, creates uh, an interactive sort of uh, explanation, okay, interactive sort of explanation on uh, some question that is thrown to the, to the chatbot, okay. And in a way or another of how I see it, um, even though 
even even though um the student are not uh, uh creating the the essay or whatever they are supposed to create on their own they actually learn something out of it out of what chat gpt explains okay uh, and probably uh, chat gpt explains explanation is so good that when the interaction between the student and the chatbot uh, create some uh, meaningful experience for the student in learning okay that is one point okay one point where okay again um, all in all even though the student uses chat gpt to produce the text the student actually learn okay that is one good point of it okay okay the second one is the concern of everybody using chat gpt and um, you would have some sort of similar answer okay so chat gpt tends to create similar sentence sentences okay so uh i as as me as as far as i was concerned okay we have a plagiarism checker right? plagiarism checker usually will check whether um uh, an answer is similar to um something that is uh, already been produced for example if i let's say if i want my student to create an essay of a topic a two-page essay on a topic and then uh, that particular student copies uh, the uh, whole passage from another student the um, plagiarism checker will automatically check uh, the sentence as the same okay so if i were to identify this okay when i create a question okay i can uh, similarly do the same meaning that uh, i can upload my own version of answer from chat gpt okay and upload to the plagiarism checker before my student can submit the task okay so automatically um, i can check okay the, the the plagiarism checker will uh, give a warning okay whether it is 100 percent similar or uh, it has some sort of similarity so again it will go back to me to accept whether uh, uh, at how um, uh, how much similarity that i would accept so that i identify my student work as an original uh, original writer original work or something like that okay so it is manageable and and some application have been introduced to to identify uh, some uh, other people's works whether it's ai generated or not okay uh, and and this system works the same way so what it does it, it actually uh, copies the question okay, generated by the chat gpt and then uh, compares with the work that the students send okay through uh, some sort of plagiarism checker okay and and it's manageable uh, i wouldn't worry about it as long as the student learns something okay but if it's 100 percent similar then definitely we can uh, work out uh, on that uh, okay uh, so next next question i believe uh, we have uh, okay so that's all our questions for now yeah. uh, the other questions are uh, maybe the participants can ask through your social media okay so oh, okay okay meaning that you want to ask question on um the, about ai is it oh yes to okay. add uh, to other person okay. okay currently the, the social media that i mentioned is my my personal social media but if you were to ask question on ai you can yes you can message me uh, uh in in personally okay because some of the posts are not ai related but okay but i am creating currently creating one that is focused on ai so far uh, but i haven't published it yet there's only one video and i will announce it in in my private 
social media. So uh, if you follow me, then definitely you will be notified. All right, thank you, Mister Aziz. Okay, next the last question. Uh, no, uh, that's that's all the question for today. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So um, I have to wrap up everything. So what we have learned so far. So AI um as a disruptive technology, it relies heavily on the data. Okay, data understanding is important. So um we as uh a consumer to the social media account that we have okay we need to be aware that whatever we share online can be used by ai okay it, it can be your uh, personal information it can be uh, your image it can be your work okay uh, it can be anything as long as you publish it uh, in the internet um, ai can analyze it okay and, and like ai can replicate uh, your work AI can uh, recognize you. AI can understand um, uh, all about you. Okay, when your data is over the internet, then um, it's open for AI to analyze your data. But of course, if you were to use it on your own, you need to understand that data needs to be clean, organized, and processed. And each AI algorithm is different. Okay, this this is a very different topic. Okay, if because um today we are only talking about the possibilities, uh, what uh how AI has become a disruptive technology. But if you were to implement AI on your own, we will need a different session for it. Okay, so AI algorithm have different usage, a different model needs different fine tuning. And uh, changing the hyperparameter will uh, uh, change the behavior of of the AI. Okay, and and I didn't actually discuss this, but um, later on, okay, if we have uh, other sessions, uh, other webinars, okay, that we can create, so we can discuss on this topic later. And uh, finally, as stated, the growth of the AI field has been exponentially over the last decade. And the question is not uh, if more progress will be made, AI will eventually come to us. So it is inevitable. All right. So it's uh, supposed to make our life easier. It can be applied in your business. You can make use of it if you know how to use it. Okay. It's a double edged sword. It can be abused, but if it is used correctly, it can bring so many benefits to everybody um, and uh, give you an advantage uh, so it is uh, an innovation that uh, enough to get everybody inspired and to get started on your own ai journey all right i think that's all that i can share for tonight's session okay i hope everybody uh, had a uh, very great time okay uh, listening to my explanation on ai as a disruptive um, technology okay thank you mr razi for an interesting talk and your valuable insight now we will have a group photo sessions um, all participants okay. are required to turn on the camera and ready for the sessions hold on let me stop my uh, sharing There are a few more people that have not turned on their camera. My camera is on. Three. Okay, everyone, is everyone ready? Okay, one, two, three, everyone smile. Okay, another one.
Okay, so thank you. Okay, so the link uh, of the feedback on today's event is available in the Webex chat panel and the YouTube comment sections. Please fill in the feedback form and we would appreciate it if you can complete that and provide your feedback for our future improvement. Okay, so we have come to the end of this webinar now. On the behalf of the College of Computing, Informatics and Media at the end, once again, I want to thank you uh, to our honourable speaker, Mr. Razi Samsudin, for such an interesting talk. It was a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you all uh, for attending this webinar. We hope you have had, uh, we hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentations. We look forward to seeing you again in our next webinar session on 16 February 2023 with an exciting topic in mathematics. So goodbye and have a great weekend, everyone. Welcome. Thank, you. thank you very much. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Um, Obrar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here, is it? it was very interesting. Yeah. See you guys next week. <laughs>